Hi, my name is Ichiban and I'm with Adobe today and we're going to be talking about DSLR cameras. If you're new to photography, I'd recommend picking up an older DSLR to learn the settings and ins and outs of photography. There are plenty out there and they're quite cheap. If you're unfamiliar with this term, you've probably heard it being thrown around a few times, especially when people say professional camera. But let's break it down. In this video, we're going to cover what DSLR means, how it actually works, the interchangeable lenses and sensors, and the pros and cons of a DSLR camera system. Let's go. So what is a DSLR? DSLR is an acronym which stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex and is a camera system that's quite popular. The D stands for digital, which means it uses a digital sensor to capture images. Of course, there are SLRs, which are not digital, but use the same mirror mechanism, but let's focus on the DSLRs today. Let's move on to the next two letters, SL, which stands for single lens. And as you can see, you're able to change lenses as you please. And finally, one to the last letter, R, which stands for reflex, which refers to the internal mirror mechanism and how DSLRs work. So how does the DSLR work? DSLRs use an optical viewfinder system which directs the light through the lens into an angled mirror, shoots the light upwards into a prism and then outwards into the optical viewfinder which you put your eye to. One of the main benefits of using a DSLR is that it uses this optical viewfinder mechanism. When you put your eye to the viewfinder of a DSLR, what you see is an exact optical view of the scene. This is exactly what your lens and camera sees. Hey, now you might be wondering if there's a big mirror in front of the camera sensor, how does the light hit the sensor for the camera to take the image? It is a slightly complicated mechanism. But what happens is when the light passes through the lens, the mirror which is tilted at a 45 degree angle lifts up out of the way in which the light can pass through to the sensor. There's a shutter curtain right in front of the sensor which drops down and takes the image. This entire process happens repeatedly when you take burst photos but that depends on how fast your camera can shoot burst. Now the whole reason for this complicated mirror mechanism is so you can get an optical viewfinder which is an exact replica of what your camera sees. The more modern mirrorless cameras by contrast have done away with the complicated mirror mechanism inside DSLRs and instead use a digital viewfinder which is essentially a tiny screen inside the eyepiece. As you can see, as I get closer to the digital viewfinder, it automatically turns on. What you're looking at is a digital screen inside the viewfinder. It's pretty nice and clear, not bad for a digital screen. There are pros and cons of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, which we'll cover later in the video. All right, let's talk about the digital sensors in DSLRs. One of the key reasons why you'd want to shoot on a DSLR camera versus say your smartphone is the sensor size is a lot larger than your smartphone. There are two main types of sensors in a DSLR, APS-C and full frame 35mm. The difference between both is that one is slightly smaller than the other, with APS-C being the smaller size. This means you have a narrower field of view even if you use the same lens. For example, if you were to use a 50mm lens on the full frame sensor, that would actually equate to 80mm, which is about a crop factor of about 1.6 on the APS-C sensor. Generally, the bigger the sensor, the more light you can capture, which means higher quality and dynamic range. But there are uses for each size sensor. All right, let's talk about the interchangeable lenses on a DSLR. The lenses on a DSLR can be taken off and replaced with another lens. This gives you a lot of flexibility as it allows you to choose the right lens for the right situation. Each lens has a different look and style. There are a ton of different lenses, from wide lenses to telephoto lenses, to even zoom lenses which enable you to change the focal length and zoom in and out by twisting the lens itself. There are also some high quality lenses which have a wide aperture, say 1.4 or 1.2, which enable you to capture a sharp subject and throw the background into a nice blur, also known as bokeh. Whether your goal is to shoot an intimate portrait or a stunning wide landscape, it's pretty cool that you can use a DSLR to change lenses and achieve the look that you're after. All right, so let's move on to the pros and cons of a DSLR camera system. The most obvious advantage of a DSLR is the optical viewfinder. The optical viewfinder through its mirror system is an exact replica of what your camera actually sees. The second advantage of a DSLR camera is long battery life. 
as you're using an optical viewfinder, you don't actually need to use any battery power to power any screens to be on while you're shooting. Comparing this to modern mirrorless cameras, which by contrast have worse battery life because it always requires one of the screens to be on when you're using the camera. All right, and the third advantage of using a DSLR, depending on who you ask, is the bigger size which means you have a bigger body to grip onto. And it's been a design that's been refined over decades of time. Because it's bigger, you're able to fit more dials and buttons onto it. All right, so let's talk about the disadvantages of a DSLR compared to say something like a mirrorless camera body. In 2022, the mirrorless cameras are quickly catching up and surpassing the DSLR in a lot of ways. Although the optical viewfinder in a DSLR will never be matched by a digital screen, they are getting pretty close in mirrorless cameras. The optical viewfinders in DSLRs, for example, are great to use in optimal light, but when it gets a bit darker, it's kind of hard to see. On mirrorless cameras, this is less of an issue as it uses a bright digital screen, which doesn't matter how bright or dark the situation is. Another issue is that while the optical viewfinder does show you exactly what the lens sees, depending on what your settings are, you might have them too dark or too bright, and you won't actually know until you check the photo on the back of your camera. As you can see here through the optical viewfinder on the DSLR, everything looks fine. But actually my settings are completely wrong and the image is overexposed. When you check the back screen, you can tell that it's blown out completely. With mirrorless cameras, what you see on the viewfinder is exactly what you're going to get as the photo. Now with my mirrorless camera, I've put in the exact same settings and as you can see through the digital viewfinder, it's very overexposed. With mirrorless cameras, what you see is what you get. It takes a lot of guesswork out of shooting photos as you already know what you've got before you've shot the photo. The autofocus is not bad, but it's definitely not as good as the mirrorless systems. Another disadvantage is the complicated mirror mechanism. Because the mirror has to lift up and down each shot, there is a physical limit to how fast and how many photos you can shoot in burst. The mirrorless systems are getting quite crazy with the frame rates they can shoot in burst mode compared to a DSLR. The older DSLR systems are slowly getting replaced by the newer mirrorless systems as camera companies are slowly phasing out the DSLRs. That said, DSLRs are a bit older. They are cheaper to pick up on the secondary market if you're on a budget. So that's everything you need to know about DSLRs. My name's Ichban. See ya.